So there was nine living children, and th these are the children. Now George Britton, that was the father. <clears throat> um, he died. He got killed when my dad was eleven months old. My dad was the youngest, and my dad was eleven months old. And in those days, they did not have social security or factories to work in in that area. So it was very, everybody in that, most, a lot of people were very, well, they were, they had a good living until the father got killed. And the way he got killed is, in those days, they had grudges and all the men carried guns. So uh, <clears throat> what happened is, George was in some honky-tonk or something, and um, this other fellow, he, he hit a little kid or something. But anyway, George and this other man got into a heated argument, and this guy says, George, the next time I see you, I'm going to kill you. Now, this is what my dad told me. Mm -hmm. So, Zan, the oldest boy used to go to work with his dad, and they were down by the railroad station in Shawnee. There's pictures in the book of the railroad station. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, I don't know what they were doing down there, but anyway, this man, the enemy of George, was on the train. And he, as he stepped off the train, he pulled his gun, and he shot George. Well, George shot him back, well, the other man lived a couple of days, but George died right there with his oldest son, Zan, who was an uh, older teenager. So that left all those children, my dad, 11 months old. And they were so poor, you know, no, yeah. no means of support. And they were uh, poor until the boys got big enough to go into the coal mines. Yeah. Then when they went into the coal mines that, you know, helped. But Daddy said that he remembers when he was a little boy, a lot of times they wouldn't have anything to eat until the older boys went out and shot a rabbit for supper. Jeez. I mean, they were really poor, but they all were turned out to be exceptional people. And Rosalie and I used to talk about, you know, they would have been like the Kennedy family had the father lived and they had all had a chance yeah. because... They were the most handsome boys. They were all so handsome. So anyway, um, the um, they grew. You know, they grew up. They they managed. They, they stuck together. They were all very very close. And then um, Zan married Sue. They had three children: Mac, Dorothy, and Charlene. Mm -hmm. And then Earl married Charlotte. And they had Harold, Wilma, Aline, and Rosalie. Well, I have all that. Let's see. And then Ross, uh, he, he, he didn't die until after I was married. And then Bill, the one that was killed in the mines, he was working in the mines with uh, Earl. And um, <clears throat> there was a puddle of water. And there was a wire running under under the puddle of water to the other side and uh, Bill didn't see, Bill didn't know so um, it was a live wire so he and Earl were working side by side well Bill just happened to step in that puddle of water and he was electrocuted Jeez. and and Earl, Earl grabbed him and he said all all that Bill said was oh Lord and he was dead and that's who I named my son after. Yeah. My Bill, well, his name is William, but my dad always said, if you ever have a boy, I want you to name him after one of my brothers. Yeah. So I picked William. Well, anyway, so then uh, <clears throat> I've got the name of, uh, I don't, Bill married Kate. I don't know their last name, and they had two children. They lived over in Middlesbrough. And then Joe married Reva Marco. They just had one daughter, Geraldine. And then Maud was the oldest daughter. You know, I have some pictures of these women someplace. They were, they're beautiful women. Mammy was a beautiful woman. And well, Ma Maud married um, a man by the name of Macmillan, and they had two sons. 
and they moved to Indiana, and both of her sons worked as prison guards in a prison there. And Daddy, my dad, since when we lived in, when he was still living, once he went out to see them, oh, I know why he went. Maud's husband died, mm -hmm. and Daddy went out there for the funeral to Indiana, and he met the Maud's two sons. And then um, Minnie was the oldest, no, Maud was the oldest girl. She married a McMill and they had two sons. Then Minnie, um, she never married, but she had a life companion. Her name was Lucretia, but we called her Aunt Luke. Well, Aunt Luke is Harold's wife's Vera's aunt. Your, un your oh, yeah. uncle okay. Harold? Yes, I, Vera, thought, yeah, I thought that was Vera's aunt. We called her Aunt Luke. Yeah, I remember her well. Do you remember yeah, Aunt I remember Luke? Both. Oh, they yeah. used to come every Very time well. we go down there. They'd come drop by. Oh, really? I really never knew their relationship. Yeah, I, did. I, I they were life that. companions. Yeah, I didn't know that yeah. they were related to Granny or Daddy Britton. I didn't know that that yeah. was his sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Minnie was or I didn't Earl's sister, it. and um, Aunt Luke was. She was a. She played the piano beautifully. She was. Well, she had been married and had a child. Let's see, I don't know who it was, but anyway. So then, um, Bess was the youngest sister, and she married Frank McWilliams. Well, mm -hmm. Frank's picture is in here someplace. I've got it marked. And um, they had um, five children, Bess and Frank did. Uh, Ralph, Mildred, Jack, Billy, and Patsy. But this Maud married a Mick. Williams. Ma no, Mo Macmillan. Macmillan. Yeah, Macmillan. I, I don't know his first name. Now, did Maud come to see us? Was she very big? And I don't remember. I, she probably didn't. Yeah. Because she used to come to Mammy's, oh, once in a great while. I remember just seeing her one time. Mm. But she was a beautiful... Those women, when they were yeah. younger, they were beautiful. She's not the one I'm thinking of. No, it Maud. must have been Minnie. That it was probably Minnie and Aunt Luke. They were yeah. very good companions, yeah, they, you know. I remember Aunt Luke. Yeah. Especially. She was and, short, uh, little, yeah. kind of goofy acting. And Who was that? Minnie. Oh, I mean, uh, Luke. Aunt Luke. Luke. Yeah, she was, yeah. Smiling and I remember in this book, it will tell you about chivalries, like when somebody was getting married, mm -hmm. they would do a chivalry or I think that I don't know exactly, but it's got it in here. And I remember when Harold and Vera got married, mm -hmm. well, before they got married, they did a chivalry. They ride them on a log. The men ride the other men, and they take them here and there. And, oh. But I remember that I was little, but all that was, you know, kind of traumatic, yeah. and it was <laughs> It was fun, and then uh, I it talks in here about molasses stirs. What they would do, the sugar cane, mm -hmm. when they would cut the sugar cane in various areas where they would raise the sugar cane, that then they would make these big vats almost as long as this house, and they would boil the sugar cane down to make molasses, They'd have these big long sticks with big paddles on them, and they would stir them. Well, a truck would come along, and all the neighborhood in in uh, Earl's area, we'd all pile. Now I was little, but all I can remember all that. We'd get a truck full of people, and we'd go to the molasses stir. That was a big deal because there wasn't that much to do. <laughs> yeah. But I, it was evidently so much fun that I remember it huh. and I remember those big molasses bats you know mm -hmm. and then um, Wilma taught at the school down there and I, there's pictures of the school well I went there one year oh. and um, I remember that and um, but I think Wilma, Wilma didn't teach there I think she was married I don't know if she was I don't know I can't remember that, but I can remember um, going to school there, and I re and um, it must have been during the war, maybe because everybody was quite poor, yeah. and so the government supplied the food for the children to have a hot lunch, 
and there was a little house right out there from the school and the ladies would go in and cook a hot meal and then all the school kids would go in there for lunch and I can still remember the rice pudding I thought that was the, oh that was I was little but that stuck with me that rice pudding you yeah. know and there was a three room uh, schoolhouse brick it's the pictures in here and um, I remember in my class there was about three grades like first second and third maybe and I even remember my teacher's name Jimmy Nevels and I remember getting a Jimmy. beating from him Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, what happened is the whole class, he stepped out and the whole class got naughty, I guess. Yeah. So he he punished the, everybody. So he had this big cedar kettle with holes in it. So we all had to bend over the like this and he whacked us all. And I remember, oh, I I couldn't sit down. And I remember Jack McWilliams. He was must have been in a grade and he started laughing at me because, uh, you know, and um, so then once a week they would have a movie at the schoolhouse. And I remember Carl and Wilma recording them. Oh, geez. And I remember they would come to, the, I can just see it right now, they were standing over by the wall over there. They'd have this movie. I remember it would be in the middle building of the schoolhouse. And uh, everybody would sit here, and it was always a cowboy picture, Roy Rogers or yeah. or something like that, you know. And uh, I can remember uh, Wilma or Carl once had on a raincoat, so it must have been damp or something. But they were they were um, they weren't married yet. And then once Wilma always had a boyfriends. She was so pretty and popular. And um, this is long before she was married yeah. to Carl. So this one um, boyfriend, Billy, my cousin Billy, she, she and I were buddies because mm -hmm. we were this pretty much the same age. Um, Wilma had this one boyfriend and the, it had been raining and the grass was slick. So I guess he was kind of showing off and he came down the steps from the porch <laughs> And when he, when he got on the, the grass, his foot flew oh. out from under and he fell. Oh. And I think he was so embarrassed. <laughs> then another time at Charlotte's, we all laughed about this later, but Rosalie was, you know, she would speak her mind. Mm -hmm. And I guess that Wilma had one of her boyfriends came for dinner. And um, Charlotte um, fried a um, ham steak, you know, ham. Mm -hmm and everything and had on the platter and everything so they were eating and so you know everybody's under good behavior when you have a co company so um, I don't know what it was but the guy was going to take the last piece of ham or something and Ross Lee says well he already had <laughs> he already had his share she wanted it and that was so that's they funny. never forgot that, you know, that was told over and over. He, says, he already had his share. Uh, that's <laughs> funny. So I can remember things like that. And then we used to walk out to the spring. The Robinsons, Betty Jean, <clears throat> her name was Betty Jean Smith, because mm. um, he talked, the writer of this book, Robinson, uh, yeah. Ralph Robinson, yeah. Yeah. he talked about his sister, Betty. Yeah. Well, she was Billy. <clears throat> age and my age so <clears throat> we used to go out to the spring and Billy and me would meet Betty Jean there we'd go up in the cedars mm -hmm. and we'd play yeah. house and we'd pick daisies and they'd be our our eggs because it'd be a little yellow thing here you know and then the little white you know but we'd make up all these dishes out of uh, wildflowers <laughs> but it was so fun that I never forgot it. And then I remember Earl had a big walnut tree and they would gather all the walnuts and store them in the barn down there. Uh -huh. I don't know if that barn was still, but it was down the path. Yeah. 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 I remember. And, uh, there used to be all these walnuts in there. Hmm. Was that cedar uh, planting with those trees on 
Robinson property? Yeah. Because we used to, he used to take us up there. Up in there. Yeah. Up in the All the cedars. Time. Yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. Oh, yeah. We used to play up there. It was so peaceful. You know, I was like, I wish you could go back to that again. Yeah, I know. But the spring out there, um, that's where they got their water. Oh. And if they did laundry, well, I remember at, well, at Mammy's or Bess's after Mammy. After Mammy passed away, we say Bess's house because yeah. Minnie and I think Minnie and Aunt Luke they had a home. And then I remember, let's see, after the war, or remember the CCC camps mm -hmm. where they planted trees and everything? Yeah. Well, when I was little, I was kind of Minnie's, Minnie, Aunt Minnie's favorite, and so. She had a job <coughs> teaching the men who worked at the CCC camps. It was far away, you had to drive. I don't know how we got there. But I remember she would, I guess that one of the recommendations for the men getting the job is, well, they wouldn't have any education. They would have to learn to read and write and things like that. So many would go, she would be their teacher. And so uh, at lunchtime, I remember we'd all sit under trees and she would pass out paper and pencils. And, and then we would always take a lunch along peanut butter sandwiches. My favorite. Yeah, mine too. And then um, I remember we'd go to this, they were, you know, trees and all that hmm. and so I remember I'd go with Minnie and she used to she had a friend when I was real little her name was Bessie Cottrell they lived well on the quite a little way away we could walk there it was across the railroad tracks past this railroad station and um, Bessie Cottrell Minnie would take me there and we'd stay all night and I remember they had a pet pig, and the pig would come in and out, and they had a cold cook stove, and um, the, the door that you opened the cook stove to bake in, I guess it was broke, and Bessie would prop it up with a stick, and that pig's favorite pastime would be, he'd come in, knock the stick over, and the door would fall. So everybody thought that was hilarious, <laughs> but I can remember that because it evidently made an impression on me. Yeah. But um, and uh, so many like the little kids, but then as you get older, uh, well, I move. I'd have to come back to Michigan or something. But we used to live when I was little. We lived, you know, where Earl and Bess. That house up there, oh, uh, above, above them? Yeah, that house up there. Oh, yeah. I thought the Rainies, was it the yeah. Rainies lived this, there? Yeah, forever. But I, we probably lived there before they did. <laughs> um, I was little, I can remember living up there. And one thing that stuck with me, I was must have scared me or something. The preacher in Shawnee was called Millard Vance. And they were always trying to get my dad to go to church. And when they would preach, oh my goodness, you could, you know, yeah. hellfire and brimstone yeah. and all this. And that was a Methodist, right? No, we went to the Baptist. That was across the road from the Methodist. The Methodist was more refined. Well, see, Mom was Methodist. Yeah. And I thought all the Britons were Methodist. No. Mm -hmm. But Dad was Baptist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Carl. Yeah. yeah, they were, and the Britons were Baptists, but they didn't go to church that much. Oh, I wonder why not. But the Methodists, it was a little bit hoity-toity. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> yeah, you know. I wanted to be a Methodist. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff. But this, oh golly, I used to go to that. That Mama would take me to that Baptist church and. My God, they almost the preacher would, you know, go what you know, carry on something terrible and you think he's gonna pass out and I'd get scared to death, you know. Hello, who is this little girl? 